Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where I'm gonna be showing you how to create a page loader using only CSS, all right? So this right here is really easy to do and you can add it to any existing website or project, all right? So it's gonna look like this. If I was to refresh this page here, we can see we get this nice loader and once it's done, the page content is gonna appear after a fade away. So this right here, like I just mentioned, is really easy to do and the source code is going to be linked down below if you want to download and follow along. So going inside this tab right here, it's the exact same content as before, but of course this one does not currently have the page loader. So we're going to be adding that right now. All right, so to begin here, we're going to be starting inside the HTML just below the opening body tag. So we can create a new div with a class of loader. So this one right here is going to be the main full width and height uh, container, which is going to include the little loading spinner in the center. So the loading spinner itself is actually going to be generated using CSS, and I'm going to be showing you how to do that very shortly. But for now, uh, this is all we need for the entire, uh, you know, HTML for this loader. All right. So heading inside the CSS right up here, we're now going to be targeting the class of loader. So for that class, we're going to be giving it a position of fix to ensure that it takes up or it actually appears above everything else on the page. Alongside that, a top of zero and a left of zero to position it in the top left corner of the page, as well as a width of 100 VW and a height of 100 VH. So this just means, look, let's let you know, let's let's make it take up the entire width and height of the viewport or the visible page area. Okay. Let's also give this a display of flex and an align items of center alongside a justify content of center. So these three properties right here are going to ensure that your little loading spinner is going to be centered vertically and horizontally. We can also add a background here of a dark gray being triple three just like that. I'm now going to save this and go back in the browser and we're going to end up with something like this. As we can see, we've got that full width and height gray background, all right? Now, we can move on here by going back inside here and we're going to now be adding in that loading spinner. So for this, we can say uh, the class of loader colon colon after and this right here is going to of course give us that CSS pseudo element. So basically, if you haven't used these before, pseudo elements like this colon colon after are going to allow you to create sort of virtual elements using CSS. They behave much like regular HTML elements. So we can go inside here and we can say content equal to an empty string. We're going to be giving this right here a width of 75 pixels as well as a height of 75 pixels. Okay, just like this, as well as a border of 15 pixels solid. And then uh, we're going to use a light gray here. So uh, triple D just like that, as well as a border top color of 009578. I want to stop here and see our progress. So if I save this, go back in the browser, do a refresh, and we get this right here. All right. So we've got this little uh, virtual element using CSS, and it's now going to be a simple task of converting this into a circle. So to do that, hop back down here, and we're going to say border dash radius of 50%. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and it is now a circle. All right. So the next step is going to be to make that circle go around in animation. So to achieve that, we can go back inside here and we're going to be defining a new animation on this spinner. So for this, we're going to say animation, then just say loading at 0.75 seconds. It's going to use the ease timing function as well as an infinite for the uh, uh, iteration count. So we have this infinite animation. This loading uh, animation name here is not yet defined. So we can now define this animation, what it actually does and which properties it modifies. So for this one, we can drop right down here. We're going to be saying at keyframes, then just say inside here loading as the identifier. Of course, this here must match uh, your animation uh, loading right here. So the animation is going to simply turn around or literally rotate the actual circle. So. It's going to go from um, a transform 
of rotate at zero turn. So this just means what it currently is. So a zero turn rotation. I'm gonna go from a zero turn to simply a one turn. So this right here is gonna move the uh, spinner around a full turn at 0 0.75 seconds infinitely, okay? Save this, back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here. The next step is gonna be to create a class for the actual loader, which is going to then hide it or make it fade away, all right? So this class here is gonna be called .loader dash dash hidden, all right? Also keep in mind that the JavaScript is actually gonna be adding this class to our loader element once the page has fully loaded. So when we want the loader to hide, we wanna change two properties. The first one is gonna be the opacity. We wanna drop it down to zero. And the second one is gonna be uh, the visibility property. We're gonna drop this down to hidden. So by default, uh, this right here is gonna have an opacity of one and a visibility of visible, but of course we're changing that when this class is being added, all right? So that being said, if I drop down here, um, and then I just add the class of hidden to my div here, go back in the browser, refresh, of course, it's not gonna be there, all right? But even better, if I go back inside here, I'll remove this class and then update that class on the fly. So I'll go inside the element section right up here on my class and I'll just say loader dash dash hidden and press enter and it's going to uh, go away just like that. Now, let's make this actually fade away with the nice transition. So to do that, we can head back inside the loader and we can say a transition here of opacity at 0.75 seconds and the visibility also at 0.75 seconds. So now, if I go back in the browser, do a simple refresh here and I add back that loader, uh, dash dash hidden class, it's gonna fade away just like that. So now we're all done with the HTML and the CSS. It's gonna be a simple task now of, of course, uh, you know, actually making that, um, you know, class of hidden added uh, when the page first loads up. So we can say down here, uh, window .add event listener. we're gonna listen for the load event. So once the page is fully loaded up, we're gonna do this right here. Now, inside here, we're now gonna simply say document.querySelector and we just say here dot loader. So selecting the first element with the class of loader, we're now gonna say dot class list dot add and we're gonna add that class of loader dash dash hidden. Save this, go back in the browser, do a refresh and now as we can see, once the page has loaded up, that right there is going to fade away and we are done with the loading spinner. Now, one thing you may wish to do is actually remove your loader from the page entirely once the page has fully loaded up. So we can see here, the actual you know loader is still there, but it's just sort of hidden in the background, all right? So if you wish to remove the loader completely, go back inside here and we can say this, all right? We're gonna say, uh, once again, document.querySelector. Uh, we're gonna be selecting, once again, just that loader class of loader right here, if I can type it correctly. There we go. And we're gonna say here dot add event listener. So we're gonna say here transition end. So this event is gonna fire off once a transition has ended on the loader uh, class. So that transition of course is gonna be in our case, it's gonna be um, you know uh, this transition here for the opacity and the visibility and so on. So for this right here, we're gonna say once that transition ends, we can just say uh, document.body.remove child, and we can pass in here document.query selector all once again, or just query selector, passing in that loader. Now, optionally, you may wish to actually make a constant for your uh, loader here, so I might just do that right now. Go up here and I'll say const loader equal to and just put this right here into a constant. That way, don't need to always retype that query selector. So something like this and we should be done. So once the transition ends on your fadeaway, it's gonna remove that element from the body. Save this, back in the browser, refresh. It's gonna do its thing like normal, but now once it fades away, we're gonna see right there it gets deleted from the document. So that right there is how to create your own CSS only page loader. Thanks for watching today's video guys. If it helped, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.